All right, so let's say we want our player to go onto the platform itself and we want it to fall, right? So we'll go onto the platform and the platform will disappear and our player will fall because the platform has disappeared. Well, how do we do this? We're gonna wanna use something called an area 2D, specifically on top of the platform. So we'll kind of look at how we do that in Godot in a minute, but the basic idea first is understanding an area 2D. And how does an area 2D work? Well, our area 2Ds have a body entered signal, and this signal can help us whenever it is triggered. So when the signal is triggered, it'll send this signal and allow us to know that we can do something. This something being having the uh, platform disappear, right? Well, how do signals work though? Well, once the signal is triggered, it sends that signal or it can send that signal to a script where we write our code, right? A script is where all our code goes. So that signal can be sent to the script, but we'll need to attach it. So we'll look at how we can do that inside of Godot. Now, additionally, on top of that, once the signal is sent, we can actually have the platform disappear. So let's take a look at how we can do that inside of Godot. All right, so before we get started inside of uh, this solution project, I first wanna just show you my setup, which is very simple. Simply just has a static body as a floor and a player with a random sprite and the script attached to it is the default template. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And in my debug, I do have visible collision shapes on, so that way we can see the floor. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first question I have for you guys, which node should be used to detect when the player is standing on a platform, do you think? A, area 2D, B, collision shape, C, raycast 2D. The correct answer is A, area 2D. Now, before we get into that, we do need to make the platform. So how do we do that? Well, I'll kind of just give it to you this one. We're gonna use a static body. So inside of here, we can add our collision shape. And we'll zoom in here, give it a rectangle. We can search up platform. I have a platform right here, so I'll use this one right here. And this will represent our platform. Now for the collision shape, I'll simply set it to the same size as this platform. And one of the cool parts about this is that in my collision shape, I can turn on one-way collision. And if I hit play, uh, well, nothing will happen per se because I need to save this platform into my scenes folder. And what I can do is add it into my scene. Here we go. And now I can jump through it, but I still collide on the top. All right, so going back to the solution before, we need to add an area 2D. That will allow us to represent or figure out if I'm actually touching something. So I'm gonna rename my static body to floor. I'm gonna add a script here to my script folder. Hit create. And I should probably rename it to platform because that's what it is. And what I'll do is I'll delete this code and I'm gonna connect the body entered signal to my platform. Next, I'm going to give my area 2D a collision shape and give it a collision shape of a rectangle. And I'm gonna make this rectangle just hit the top side. This will essentially allow me to only touch the feet of the player and not the head. So this will only activate if the feet of the player touches the platform. And we could make it a little skinnier like so. All right, so question number two, what node or feature should be used to manage the time disappearance and reappearance of the platform? A, animation player, B, timer, or C, tween? The correct answer should be B, timer. All right, so the reason is, uh, well, well, let's take a look at just the timer in general first. So let's add this guy and we'll take a look at why and how we can implement this. Well, what we can do here is add the timeout signal to our platform. And this essentially is the timeout that will happen after this timer gets started. But when do I start this timer? Well, I should start it when I touch the area 2D. So I can actually, what I can do is back in my platform, I can drag in my timer and hit control and drop. And now I have my timer auto loaded and I can now call it by just saying timer.start if an area enters the body. However, I don't wanna just start it on any body. I need to check to see if that body.name uh, is player. Now, this is not the best way to do it. 
just to kind of let you know. But uh, the reason this will work is because the name of the player node is called player. So do make sure it's also case sensitive. Otherwise, this won't work. Now, additionally, on the timer timeout, what do we want to do when it times out? We want to make it disappear. Now, how do we do that? So that goes into our next question. Which node would be ideal for animating the platform's disappearance and reappearance? A, animation player, B, tween, or C, shader material? The correct answer for this video is tweening. Now you could use animation player, that is an option, um, but for us, we're, we are going to use tweening and we'll take a look at how we can do that. So when we time out, I'm gonna create a tween by saying variable tween is equal to create tween. And then I'm gonna call the tween and say, uh, tween dot tween property and we're going to tween ourself and then the property we're going to tween is the modulate a oops now what is modulate a well if i take a look at the platform inside the inspector i can go to visibility and modulate now if i click into this you'll see that a is actually the visibility so that is what we're going to do we're going to tween it to a final value of zero. And we're gonna do this over a duration of 0.4. Now, that is pretty much it. We have essentially tweened the modulation to zero. Now, the other thing we wanna do though, is we wanna make it not collidable anymore. And how do we do that? Well, one way of doing it is I can simply take the collision shape, load it, and we could disable it, or we could uh, do any of, there's a few ways we can do this, of course. Um, but I'm going to do kind of a cheat way. Uh, I'm going to basically take the position and move it to a unrealistic position that we will never touch. This way, we can now move the collision shape away. And yeah, that's basically it. Now the question is, um, can we test this? <laughs> so let's give it a try. So let's hit play. And let's try it. So go on top. And eventually it kind of tweens and disappears. So there we go. That is our disappearing platform essentially. Right, so we can test one more time, hit the platform, and you can see it disappears. All right, so hopefully this video helped and you learned a little bit on how it works in terms of how we can make something disappear using tweens and timers. Uh, and if you did like this video and its explanations, please do hit the subscribe button down below, like, comment, and share, and I will see you guys in the future. Um, I also have a subscriber list down below definitely check that out. I send out weekly challenges similar to this one, but just, you know, in a weekly format. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you guys in the future. Happy coding, and I'll see you later.